Okay, um, let's continue our lecture um, in order to prevent uh, the casualty or the property damage from the landslide. Uh, what we can do um, is the warning. The concept of the warning is to uh, alert the people before the landslide, um, the breeze come to hit them. Um, there are two methods or two ways of the warning system. One is what we call the indirect warning. Indirect warning is uh, the warning system that we usually measuring the rainfall and use that rainfall data to predict that um, if the rainfall uh, accumulation is exceed the threshold rainfall of the landslide, the landslide can occur. So this kind of thing that we can use for indirect warning to warn ahead, ahead of time. These are the example of the rain gauges, the various type of rain gauges, um, the cup type, which is like a cup. Okay, and then um, uh, it will measuring the accumulated rainfall or precipitation in 24 hours for this case. And then um, several type could be automatic. Um, how do we get the threshold? Um, if we have the record of the rainfall and the landslide event, okay, what we can do is we can plot something like this. Um, we plot the information of the accumulation, uh, rainfall accumulation. In each country, um, the, uh, the pattern of the rainfall may not be the same. For example, in Thailand, um, one storm of the, the, the rainfall will continue for about three days. So that's why we use three day accumulation. And then we compare with the uh, rainfall intensity, which is millimeter per day, which is the unit of the rainfall per day. And then um, you can see um, these are the statistics, uh, these are the record of the rainfall, okay, um, which consists of two types or to set of the rainfall accumulation and rainfall intensity that will not cause a landslide. And um, the set of uh, 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 rainfall accumulation and intensity that can cause uh, the landslide to occur, this is in the, this notation. So we can draw some criteria that if the rainfall accumulate large enough, there's a possibility of the landslide or if the rainfall intense, so heavy, so intense, it could also trigger the landslide. Um, by using that method, we, we still call this method is an indirect method because we are not measuring the movement of the land itself, but we try to correlate yeah, the rainfall amount and the landslide. That's still called the indirect warning. However, in this case, um, if we have, if we be able to predict um, the precipitation ahead of time, like two or three days, okay, we can also in turn uh, predict uh, the possibility of landslide as well. In Thailand, we be able to predict the uh, rainfall amount in advance for about three or four days. And we can use those information okay, in order to predict the possibility of the landslide. For example, like in this case, um, we can see on the 7th and 8th of October 2014, we have prediction that there's gonna be the landslide okay, in the southern part of Thailand. Okay, this is according to the information of the forecasting rainfall. Okay, and we use this model um, we call AP model or antecedent precipitation model, okay, in order to um, make a warning, okay, to the people who are in the risky area. For example, in this case, this is the rainfall uh, prediction, and this is the um, uh, landslide prediction based on the information of the rainfall. And finally, um, this uh, were well predicted. Okay, and then actual event what failed. Um, we also put 
uh, every information into the application we call the landslide warning dot type okay and then we can use this application okay um the people who live in the risky area can turn on this application and then see the warning ahead of time like three days yeah something like that what about direct warning direct warning is mean that you the uh, measuring the possibility of the of the landslide directly at the at the earth or soil itself okay there are several methods that we can uh, measuring uh, many parameters that related to the to the land movement for example um, surface movement or maybe cracks movement a crack uh, opening and then um, power water pressure moisture change soil suction okay water level increase in the flow channel ground vibration and so on okay these are the parameter that will indicate that the the soil or the land already moved or starting to move okay so you're measuring those parameters directly okay and then you can get warning um, for example this is the, um, the the instrument this instrument called in kinometer okay it will install into the you know moving ground okay um the the material um, the equipment itself consists of the tube like this okay and this tube is flexible and then it will install into the possible uh, into the possible moving ground okay and fix into the um the ground that is will not move okay so we fix it and then if it's moved and then um this probe now we read the movement okay of this tube okay, this is called inclinometer this is example of the result of the inclinometer and the photo show the inclinometer probe yeah, that measuring the uh, the movement or the the, the tilting of the tube of the tube okay, another thing for example like um, moisture meter tensiometer or moisture sensor um this actually not really direct you know measurement um, this still um, if we have the piezometer or tensiometer that uh, measuring the moisture or the power water pressure we still need to calculate the possibility of the uh, of the landslide okay but anyway this is still in the group of the direct warning um the best way is we should combine Okay, we, we should not rely on only one method or one model. Um, in Thailand, what we use now is uh, we call the system that uh, called the multi-way warning system. Okay, um, we have the precipitation that we can predict in advance for two or three days. And then we put into the model, AP model and GTE model. And in, in order to predict it in advance, even though the accuracy of this prediction may be low, yeah, but anyway, um, there might be, uh, there still be a possibility of the landslide. Okay, that the decision maker will make a decision that whether they're going to make a warning to the people who live in the village area or not. Okay, but most most of the time they will yeah, issue the warning. Okay, and then after the warning has been issued, it means that it's been issued. The warning ahead of time like two or three days so the people who live in the village area um, will start uh, to beware okay and they will start to measuring the rain gauge, rain gauges by themselves to check the threshold of the landslide or flooding and then try to uh, discuss together that when it's going to be a, a right time to evacuate out okay before the landslide or okay, or the flat flood gonna come something like that this is the example that if we install the sensor in the village but we install the sensors um, for example the rain gauge or the debris flow sensor okay on the mountain and if it can be detected it will send the signal okay to the village to the master station head of the village again okay, and then it will send out the radio signal okay, to each house okay, in order for, um, for them to evacuate yeah. in time. Okay. 
is an example of the landslide warning box okay that we, we receive the information from the sensor and then send a signal like a bursting of the radio signal um, to the remote station that uh, located in each house okay um, and then um, this is the debris fall sensor okay they call the wire wire sensor type okay um, they will install uh, in the a possible flow channel in order to detect okay um, the, the the debris flow okay and then send the signal or the warning message to the village over there this is the village and uh, the black dot are uh, location of houses this is the example of the debris flow detection sensor okay that used to detect in the possible flow channel <coughs> um, these are the a landslide that occur on the mountain okay nowhere huh? and then um, suddenly the landslide occur like that and then uh, uh, destroy some houses some casualty in this area if you like if you look at this photo it's 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 very difficult to identify that uh, if if there is uh, before the landslide happened there will be no crew okay or no um, uh, no sign that this mountain or this uh, slope can slide down. Okay, so uh, that's why the, the the using of the uh, uh, land rainfall prediction in order to pre predict and then move the people out before the landslide happen, it will be very useful. Okay, this is the topographic uh, of the area that is that you just saw, saw the sliding okay right this is the photographic okay um mountainous area flat area and then um this is like a low uh, alluvium uh, area that the water will flow into this area okay concentrate or zoom in the, the landslide area which is this location okay the contour of the landslide area okay and then um, um, actually you can go to this um, YouTube uh, channel my YouTube eh? and then you can look at the uh, detail of this landslide in this YouTube okay you can see um, we are we were in the top uh, in the at the toe of the landslide you can see um, the top of the landslide over there is about 100 meter okay and then um, uh, the location that we are standing used to be a houses at the top of the mountain like that okay and then you see the debris that is slide down um, by looking at this photo okay I noticed some interesting facts you can see the shape of the rock <clears throat> okay some rock the shape is rectangular Okay, so it means that is maybe it's very new. It's just broke out from the mountain and slide out. But you can see some of the rock here is quite rounded. Okay, the rock is that is rounded. It means that is is already moved. Okay, and then maybe it's, it it fell down uh, for some times for some maybe uh, hundred years or more than hundred years of times. So it means that. Or maybe this one has been transported in the past because of the past landslide. So what does it mean? It means that this round shaped rock okay, indicate that indicated that in, in the past, yeah, there in this area there might be a huge landslide before. Okay. And then when we walk around, okay, in, in the in the village where the, there is no landslide, but it's nearby, we can see the evidence of rocks like this okay um, scattering around in the in the area so this is the evidence that this area used to be uh, used to have the landslide and affect the area so it mean that the people move in uh, into the risky area into the landslide prone area okay um, we use the information okay to plot to see that if uh, the landslide is exceeds the threshold uh, of the rainfall threshold or not. Um, we found that it's quite close yeah, to the threshold that we have. Okay, 
And then this is an example of the landslide, um, the, the analysis of the landslide. You can see the uh, slope uh, of the landslide area over there. Okay, and this is the uh, slope angle, which is about like 32% um, or seven. Uh, this one is 32, oh, I'm sorry. This one is 25.1 degree. Yeah, that is the angle uh, of, of that slope. <clears throat> and when we calculate, we'll be able to calculate what we call the factor of safety of this slope. We found that the factor of safety is lower than the safety limit. Safety limit is 1.0. But anyway, even though you know you back analysis and you found that this one is lower than the you know the the, the stability requirement, but before the landslide, nobody gonna go and then calculate the factor of safety of the mountain for the whole mountain. That's gonna be too much work okay um, so that's why um, we cannot do the analysis or detail analysis of every mountain but we better relocate the people who are living in the risky area okay and then um, or otherwise if they cannot move out we need to provide you know the adequate warning system okay just like the system that i told you direct or indirect it's okay all right so and also the best way is it's not just only do the warning okay and and evacuate or otherwise try to using the engineering measuring engineering measures like a, um, like a returning wall or some strengthening of the slope it's difficult to do that um one other way to mitigate this is to uh, set up the regulation okay for example after this event uh, we try to set up the regulation that if the uh, if the uh, slope mountain is more than 27 degrees this is according to our analysis okay um and um there would be uh not there we, we will not allow okay any house or any any uh, construction okay in this kind of slope and also if you know the location uh, of the building of the house okay is less than the height of the slope eh? or within this range eh, is indicate that this area is not safe okay you better move out or better not to allow the people to uh, build a house in this range otherwise the slime mass can slide down and then causing the damage okay so um, roughly, what I like you to do, eh? let me see, what I like you to do uh, from the lecture that I already uh, given for the three lectures, um, the group work or the, or the homework that I would like you to study. I want you to study this landslide event okay in the case of uh in the topic of the causes of that landslide the damages that is happened and what could have been done eh, to prevent that damage or casualty um i have set up landslide even the important one okay about one two three four five okay um you may select okay um uh the the landslide event that you want Okay, and then study it. First of all, study it. We have a Hiroshima landslide, okay, Kumamoto landslide. This one is causing by the big earthquake in Kumamoto. Okay, and then um, 2015 Guatemala landslide. This is also very big. Okay, 2006 Southern Layet must fly. This is interesting and. Another important event is a highland tower, okay, in Malaysia that is collapsed, okay, because of the landslide. Highland Tower is a high-rise building located in the at the toe of the mountain, and it is slide out because of the landslide, okay, that moved the building and then collapsed the building. So these these are the 
five events okay that i would like you to study okay um as of now uh i i think that um if you can if individually okay we will study by yourself of these five you know events okay or maybe you can looking for some other events okay that will be interest you okay and study in this topic causes damages and then what you what could have been done okay to prevent the casualty or property damage okay so that's the homework that i like you to think of and then um we will see each other okay um during the uh, uh uh in the schedule in august okay all right so that's all for me thank you very much